and dark water i discovered um last year so 2018 maybe around the uh, start of the year um i i'm not sure how i stumbled across them i stumbled across uh, that uh, music video for the single that was on the previous uh, album to uh, this one um the uh, music video on youtube um i thought it sounded um really nice i thought it had a really uh, cool sound to it i did go and download the album and give it a listen to but um the overall quality of that album um was uh, pretty poor so uh the mix was just so kind of low and everything so if anything were heavy to happen and you could tell it was going heavy because when the heavy part happened you don't really get this punch of uh, the heaviness around the thing it's just like you can hear it get heavier but there is just nothing really there that shows it is getting heavy you can just basically hear that it's supposed to but it's not really registering that it is actually getting heavy therefore um, all the mellow sections and then the heavy parts because there's no actual um ascension in um volume or anything everything sounded extremely monotone so it kind of became a very kind of bland uh album because of that and it really did it harm but um yeah, uh, the band Dark Water released uh, Human, I believe, uh, very early this year, 2019, or maybe very late at 2018, but I'm sure it was 2019. And uh, the quality was definitely a lot more improved over the last album. So um, I did have a listen to this album before it actually um, dropped um, to the uh, general public. So um, I had I listened to it, I skipped through. And I wanted to kind of put it up before the album actually dropped. So uh, when people um, came to listen to the album, um, my review would also be there. Because uh, uh, usually when you drop um, a review, when something uh, just comes out, you get a lot more views in that time, kind of time period instead of just putting it out randomly. But the problem was uh, basically... Um, this is a progressive band. And um, there is a lot of bands that say they're progressive, but they're kind of fake. Because they're not exactly progressive. They can have small elements of none. Dark Water is proper um, progressive. So um, due to that, um, they have really long songs. Uh, kind of um, a lot of stuff kind of going on and everything. So it was very difficult to kind of get the idea in my mind and remember the songs and the intricacy that kind of goes with the album. So I couldn't really review it. Also, um, other albums started dropping that were um, a lot more easier to get into. Also, this album is very mature in its sound, while other albums had a lot more of a kind of kick and upbeatness to it. Therefore, it was a bit more fun and easy easier to digest so I would go and run away with that and then I kind of lost sight of uh, this album so um, now that I've kind of had a pause uh, finally um, I have listened to this a lot more now and I'm ready to give my thoughts on it so it's basically it's a progressive metal um, band um this is around their fourth or fifth album i think i don't really know much i just knew i listened to the previous album listen to this album and listening to this album i did listen to one of their previous albums just to see um what the contrast was kind of like i don't really have a huge knowledge of how different their sounds are compared from album to album i've just got a very little one so just going to be talking about this album it's a very mature album it's um very progressive uh, you've got some really long songs in there, so let's get into the first one, which is going to be A New Beginning. So A New Beginning starts with a kind of intro, so um, it's piano based actually, so um, I really like the piano, especially when it's delivering a very um, emotional kind of um, scene and everything, which this kind of does, it's a really beautiful sounding piano it definitely has um some real good emotion to it it's just a piano by itself it sounds really good really pleasant doesn't obviously it's welcome it's only probably around 10 seconds uh until the uh band kind of comes in i do like this intro because it doesn't just immediately start with the guitars going and everything's going at a quick pace there's not a track before this which is like two bloody minutes of absolutely nothing uh, just to do a build up which 
no one cares for intro tracks like that. When do you ever hear a person say my favourite track is the intro? Or even mention it when they talk about an album? Intro tracks are throwaway tracks, so... And just starting a song off immediately, I just think, doesn't have that rise in tension that you should have, just not in an intro song. It should just be this really short and sweet thing. Which is why I really like it here. It's a perfect way to do an intro in any band. This is how you do it. Van Zempel do it with every album they do. Maybe a bit biased on that because they're my favourite band, but I do like that and I do think that is the way you should do it. Um, so the piano is really nice. Um, then obviously the band comes in around 10 seconds and it's um, very key heavy still. Um, the bass it actually sounds quite um, prominent here actually, which is quite unusual for a band, but that is a kind of a consistent thing through the album, which I'll kind of keep touching on as uh, the review kind of goes. But uh, yeah, you immediately do hear the bass is very up front and um, the guitar is there, but it's a little shadowed actually under the bass. And um, in the pauses actually, and it's not drum and bass, the pauses for this kind of first intro part, the guitar is what is kind of there, kind of in the background. And then when the entire kind of um, intro starts, because obviously it's just like the real heavy bass and uh, guitar with uh, the drums and everything to the little um, crackle of the guitar, and then when it really gets uh, flowing into it, the keys are unbelievably in your face. You definitely hear that thick bass sound. And uh, I don't really like um, bass over. I think bass is just kind of there for a guitarist to follow. Other than that, there is no point to a bass and there's no unique sound to it. It's a very bland thing, while guitar can deliver a multitude of sounds and things, and styles and techniques. Bass don't really get that, really. But um, this already has given me an appreciation for the bass, just because it is actually being the lead riff. It's not something so far in the background that you're not really hearing it. This is basically its own instrument that you are hearing, along with the keys, and because they're so um, prevalent here, um, Again, I really am getting an appreciation for just how intense these keys are and just kind of how unique and different it is compared to bands without keyboards and everything, which kind of sounds a bit kind of stale now. This definitely gives it a bit more of a life to it and there's more going on, the bass again and being prevalent and makes it there that I can actually hear the bass and appreciate the bass. So if you do like bass, um, there is a lot of appreciation for bass through this album because it's always you can always kind of hear it. Um, as for the um, first uh, verse, um, it's still going at a pretty um, mid-tempo, quick pace and everything. The lead singer has um, a brightish type of voice, it's not um, the deep kind of style. Um, he's very um, vocal forward. Um, I've been watching a lot of vocal instructors review things and they keep saying forward voice placement. So. I believe that's where the singer kind of is. Um, he has a few kind of breathy uh, notes here and there where he'll put a bit of a kind of a breath element into uh, the delivery of uh, a few kind of words here and there. Um, but um, yeah, um, verse sounds um, great. His voice is uh, really good. The pre chorus is absolutely amazing. I adore this uh, pre chorus. Um, the guitar. Um, kind of lead um, riff that is going through this Peter E chorus just has such kind of elevation and life to it that it just sounds really great. It's a great tone too. And then the voice which kind of, you know, escalates with that guitar lead so it just kind of rises and falls and everything. It's a great flow and everything and great energy. I really, really love this pre-chorus. And they keep pausing it with this beautiful piano kind of key. Um, thing that brings it all down, but it ha still has that nice energy to it. But it's not something fun and bombastic, it's just a real nice energy that is quite relaxing and just so pleasing. But it's not melodic and soothing, it's just that mid tempo kind of beauty of a piano. And then it goes back to that lead escalation with the voice and everything, another pause with that nice piano, dun, 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 and it, it's just so amazing. You get the fun, energetic escalation and it's so beautiful with the voice and the lead guitar and then the beautiful pauses of absolutely amazing sounding uh, piano um it's in a fantastic pre-chorus i always love hearing it the actual chorus um is actually where the song actually is more laid back than anything else which is quite unusual for a song because usually the chorus is where all the fun kind of happens and everything but uh this 
isn't really the case. The verse and the pre-chorus is where all the kind of fun is, and then the chorus is where it kind of just stretches the sound out, opens it up and everything, takes a bit of a backseat and a bit of a rest. Um, you still get some kind of high notes and things at uh, places, but um, it definitely is a bit more of um, kind of a relaxed uh, kind of uh, tone. Still um, has its escalations just to give it a little life, but other than that, it's basically just an open kind of laid back uh, sound. You get the piano that kind of leads off the chorus, then you get the kind of uh, crunch guitar stuff, then leads back into the second verse. The second verse starts kind of without the guitars and everything. It's pretty much bass, drums, keys and everything. So again, another appreciation for bass by itself and everything, which really stands on its own. Because uh, some bands where they actually do attempt it, it doesn't even stand uh, on the rare occasion where bands do it. This definitely works. Then the guitar kind of comes back into its own life and then the song kind of flows uh, the same way until you get to the solo. You actually get a key solo which has a unique kind of tone for a key solo. It's not kind of the standard you would hear for a lead keyboard solo. It's um, got a very wide kind of sound to it. So it's not um, very articulate, it's like a key press and then it kind of rings a tiny bit and then it's out. It's a key press and it massively kind of echoes and things. So um, I appreciate the uniqueness of it but also because it's not articulate you can't be doing a lot of notes which he doesn't do it is the rare note and everything so you can kind of keep getting he can keep cutting through that thickness that he's kind of playing if you understand and follow what i'm saying um so i do kind of appreciate it but also i've got um i do like the other tone more which you can use a bit more articulation with but nevertheless i do um appreciate it the guitar solo that follows, so you get two solos, you get your keys and your guitars, obviously both of them instruments sound completely different, so it's great um, different um, perspective on solos, the one sound and then the uh, new sound, so good range because of that. The guitar solo is mostly kind of just like musical, it has the very basic speed, so if you think of guitarists that use speed, the very basic guitarists that don't have a lot of talent, that's kind of how fast the guy kind of gets. So he's not very quick, it's definitely just more of being a bit musical and everything. So it's not bad, he never really seems to repeat a phrase, but it's not overly talented, it's nothing like, you know, it's enough to Gate, Solaris, Baralis, uh, of Ensemble, nowhere kind of near that. Um, it is very basic because it's kind of musical, um, and it doesn't repeat a phrase. It's perfectly acceptable, it, it is serviceable and I'm glad it's there, so I like it and I appreciate it, and I can't really say anything bad about it. Um, after that though, um, it goes back to a very kind of basic um, sound with just kind of uh, piano and uh, bass and drums and then it kind of escalates with the guitar coming in and then it escalates again to where uh, some instruments just um, hold on to the notes and just have them ring out in this amazing kind of beauty and then the other instruments like the guitar has uh, that uh, kind of lead riff uh, going on over the top so it's a real nice open breathy kind of musical element. And then it'll lead back into uh, the chorus and then, you know, you get the uh, outro which uh, kind of has that kind of same intro kind of vibe to it. A little different with the really prominent um, key sound. So, this is probably one of the heaviest tracks. Um, as the album keeps progressing, it gets way melodic. So, after a new beginning, um, you, got, you have to get to about track 8 to uh, kind of get this heaviness back again. So um, I do like the energy of this, but um, if that's all you're really into, then this album is going to be a bit of a strain for you to get through because it is a very mature, slow album. But um, yeah, this track, I really, really, really uh, like it. And there's not a lot musically going on, like the keys aren't doing anything intense, neither is the guitar really, nor the bass, but they use their basic elements and make something very big out of this. The song's like 6 minutes 20 seconds and there's not a lot of lead going on. There is lead um, riffs that do happen with the guitar and everything but everything is quite kind of basic and not overly complex but the structure and the song writing is complex and that's what makes it pretty epic actually. So yeah, I really like this track so let's just get into the next one um, which is called In Front Of You. So In Front Of You is a darker song, but also a more melodic song than uh, the previous track. 
Um, so immediately it starts with just the guitar. It's um, doing that kind of speaker change. So um, it starts with um, the um, heavy kind of guitar in both kind of uh, speakers, and then um, it'll pause, and then the guitar will play again quite heavy, but it'll be in just one speaker. It does that kind of speaker positioning, and then. Um, the um, keys uh, start uh, coming in and um, it's got a bit of that kind of mirror uh, vibe, a very dark mirror vibe. Um, so it's got a Tunisian kind of sound to it. There is um, the odd um, timing where um, the guitar will do a lead that uh, it sounds like a very Tunisian inspired kind of lead. So um, he'll just go into the lead channel and just da -na, da -na -na, da -na -na, and it'll just be this kind of uh, unique kind of Tunisian sounding lead. They bring a male choir in, I think it's all males, there may be females in there, but it's definitely one of them very darker sounding uh, kind of choir and everything. It's not played too much in the song, I would have liked them to really kind of go out there with it, but um, it's kind of basically just kind of here and then the odd other place. Um, so uh, again, there's a choir and everything, so um, it's very kind of dark, there's Tunisian sounding elements in certain parts and then Tunisian leads and everything very dark in sound. Um, you get a section where uh, the lead actually becomes like this bigger section and everything where he just plays for a kind of a uh, fair few seconds just this really kind of Tunisian, not beaty sounding uh, dark Tunisian lead. It's uh, kind of weird but uh, again kind of cool just because it is like a lead and everything and interesting because of the Tunisian sound and the kind of dark uh, sound that's uh, kind of being prevalent through this entire intro. Then it uh, just leads into um, quite kind of heavy uh, chugging and everything. But then it cuts out for the verse, which um, is uh, mellow. So uh, the verse, uh, the first verse consists of the bass and the drums. So um, again, an appreciation for the bass because that has to support um, obviously the whole uh, verse. And unlike things like Evanescence, where the guitar's cut out and it's just kind of bass and drums for the verse. This bass actually sounds like it's doing something interesting, um, so um, I do really like the uh, sound of the bass and the tone he has and everything. The uh, first verse has a lot of multiple escalations because obviously it has to get to a really dark, um, aggressive kind of element. So they have to go from this just drum, bass, very soft kind of uh, vocal delivery, very kind of breathy in their delivery as well. And they have to build, take it from that up to the top without um, just going immediately there, so they have to slowly escalate it. So you'll kind of get um, a bit of a guitar in, a bit of a kind of key and everything, and that will then just in bring them in just to give it a bit more of a fuller kind of sound, and then from there the guitar will do something maybe heavy, but then the keys will be doing a piano kind of tone and everything, so then you have a brutal kind of element mixed with the beauty element of the keys. Then it'll go into the uh, kind of uh, chorus because it kind of keeps building the elements but maintaining that kind of beauty at the same time to not completely shift um, tone. So it's a real nice uh, progressive kind of um, element. I do like how that uh, kind of um, evolves. The chorus definitely has a very pu big punch to it. Um, just right here, right in front of you, and then you've kind of got string sounds. I'm pretty sure it's the keyboardist who's doing the strings, but um, they sound like strings uh, nevertheless. And um, yeah, the delivery is quite um, aggressive and everything, it's definitely kind of dark. Um, uh, the end of it is just a singer and the kind of guitar, so it's again very dark and straightforward um, aggression. And then leading into the second verse, um, it's um, this very sci-fi sounding key thing. It's really creepy sci-fi Tunisian thing, very dark and creepy, so a lot of multiple vibes coming from that. So uh, that's uh, very interesting. This verse, uh, they do it differently, so instead of it being the bass and the drums, it's actually the keys and the guitar. There is still the bass and everything in there, but the keys and the guitar, and I kind of take the lead on it. So um, it's a new kind of uh, take on it, which is quite nice, and uh, the singer's still singing in the same style, very kind of light and uh, kind of breathy at certain aspects. Um, the guitar eventually does a bit more of a kind of interesting riff with that, which sounds a little bluesy. Then they um, escalate it again, but um, obviously they can change it around. The keys will be more prevalent, or the guitar will be more prevalent, the guitar will be more back. So uh, they just basically take what was done previously and then kind of switch the instruments around. So um, 
simple, obviously, idea of let's just switch instruments around. Obviously, there's not a lot of thought to that, but obviously, it does kind of, kind of speak volumes when you actually hear it. Um, and then you get the air chorus again, which is uh, quite aggressive and everything in delivery. So, um, obviously, there's such low parts and then high parts, and then in the middle, there's multiple tiers. So, I'm um, loving the progression. The uh, vocals in here, obviously, as I said, in the melodic parts, they're more breathy, kind of more light. But then in other sections of the songs, he will actually hit a pretty high note. He does kind of escalate his voice to um, high pitches. Um, the solo this time round starts with uh, the guitar and leads to keys. The guitar solo, um, again, it's um, pretty straightforward, but it is musical and nothing is repeated. So uh, you get a lengthy solo of nothing of the same, and it's just musical. So again, it's just like, it's simple, but there is a lot of thought put into it and everything. So you can tell, and therefore you appreciate it, that you can't complain. If there's been thought put into it, and it sounds nice and it's well delivered, it doesn't really matter. I like it. The key solo this time, um, I really like the key solo for uh, this song in particular. Um, the tone he has, and just how slow he takes it, just the tone that's, again, that kind of sci-fi Tunisian sort of sound, and it's so kind of creepy and everything, and he's just so slow with it and um, really plays each part and has it um, be its own unique thing. So I really like um, the way he plays this and lets everything kind of speak for itself and the kind of vibe he's going for it. I really like uh, the key solo. Uh, then you get a bit of, you know, band play until uh, the kind of chorus comes back. You get a uh, heavy key parts, you get proper heavy um, guitar, um, a very heavy guitar parts where it's just very brutal riffs. So for those people, because there are loads of them who just say as long as there's a heavy riff I don't really care because I'm so brain dead and simple. Um, it is there, you got a really heavy um, riff, but um, I'm, not a, I'm not pleased that easily. I appreciate it because it's something new, but obviously th there should be a bit more. But I like it, and um, it's again a good play, they don't linger on a certain aspect for too long, they keep progressing until it gets back to the chorus. So that is it, let's get into a live part one. So a live part one is just one minute, 20 seconds of a song, and it's basically just the introduction for the following track, a live part two. Now, short songs like this, people kind of say, well, it's just a throwaway song, it's just a kind of build up that goes into the next track, and although that can be the case sometimes, a live part one um, has the whole band going. It's not just some kind of, sounds that leads and builds into what comes next. It is its own thing and its own tone that then flows completely into a live part uh, two. There's no break or anything, it just flows into it and then it goes into a massive tone tonal shift. So I would say you should listen to a live part one. It is not just a standalone song, it's not a throwaway thing. It's basically tied directly to part two so basically part one part two it's the exact same track they've just split it up so um it starts off uh, pretty immediately there is no kind of build um it's just uh, the uh, guitar kind of clean channel it's a very kind of beautiful sounding clean channel guitar sounds really nice uh, the vocal delivery is super it's so so warm and so nice and um, with just the guitar and just his voice and obviously the tone of each of them sounds unbelievably amazing. It's just such a beautiful kind of journey just sitting back and just letting the song just wash over you. It's just really, really beautiful. Um, about halfway through the track you do get a bit more of an atmospheric uh, sound that comes in. I don't know what exactly is doing it, it's just an atmosphere sound. And um, it just escalates it that little bit more just give it a bit more life near the end of the track um the uh vocalist uh, starts doing these really high notes not you know belting it would be really weird if you just went out and belted something it's just this really soft well maintained high note and it's just it's so beautiful and then the song ends on him just saying you completely by himself and then it goes immediately into what is part two. So live part two starts um, immediately just after part one finishes. Um, it starts uh, with uh, the guitars, uh, there's um, a bit of uh, opera singing, and um, there's occasions where the guitar will do a bit of a lead, 
and the keys then come in a little in the background and then they turn over to piano then it turns over to a bit of that uh, kind of keys in the background and then um, again there's uh, still more um, the uh, kind of choir going uh, leads riff then it goes to a uh, quickly um, picked um, lead guitar riff with um, only bass supporting him underneath so there's no kind of guitar underneath it is all bass um, and that's all you hear for the rhythm and then you kind of get a kind of piano under that as well and then there's uh, he finishes with the kind of quick pace um, riff the guitarist and um, the keyboardist takes into this kind of frantic uh, kind of area and then it goes back to his kind of lead and then just kind of the piano and everything and the bass and then it ends again with uh, the key going frantic this is the thing I really like about the keyboard, is he's not just one sound, it sounds, the band sounds like they have like three bloody keyboardists. Because they have one key sound, then a piano sound, and then another key sound that does like the opera kind of string sounding stuff, or the sci-fi Tunisian things, then back to keys. So this I love about the keyboardist, because he's one, sounds awesome every time you hear him, and two, there are multiple styles of keys that you're hearing, so it always sounds like there's three actually going on when all there is is just the one. Which, um, I think it's incredible, and then obviously they really uh, utilise the bass player, which I don't think really that many bands really utilise the bass player and give him, you know, his own kind of standing board to really kind of stand on and uh, present what he's capable of. So, really, really, really love the band for um, them things. Um, it gets into the uh, verse, um, which um, it's first starting off. Um, very soft, uh, there's not really much going on, you get a very, very low breathy um, vocal delivery and then um, once that part kind of uh, wraps up and um, the guitar and bass comes in with this really thick sound so it's very bass, thick, heavy and then obviously because it's mixed in with exactly what the guitar is doing, because the guitar is still there but obviously it blends in with the bass so it's a really thick sound and then it leads into the kind of actual kind of um, verse which um, is again kind of got melody to it. The keys, I think, I think it's the keys, but uh, there's a kind of female uh, sounding uh, choir very faint in the background. I think that might be the keys. Um, so uh, that's kind of prevalent throughout the verse. I'm um, obviously giving it this kind of big epic vibe, but also this kind of dark creepiness uh, to it as well. Um, the voice has obviously got this mellowness to it. Um, eventually, it gets the second part, well, actually, the third part of the verse, I would say, um, where uh, the guitar comes in with um, a riff which is more kind of lead based and everything. Uh, the vocalist then goes into a very high kind of register, so it's a quite high vocal delivery. And then the piano kind of uh, takes it into what the chorus is. The chorus is this real kind of mid-tempo, real kind of nice beauty of a kind of chorus. It has good flow, it, um, the lead singer kind of backs himself up with their backing voices. And um, yeah, it's just got a real kind of beauty to it and it's just really kind of pleasant. And then it leads back into uh, the uh, verse which um, kind of has more of a prevalent key and everything so it's not as kind of laid back as the first verse, it's got a bit more to it. Um, the solo for this one um, is a really good solo, like um, the first part of it is really slow and has a hell of a lot of emotion um, attached to it. It's really slow, incredibly emotional. But then he kind of escalates on his own solo, which is a good thing to hear, so it's not just a one kind of, you know, track mind, just this is going to be this one and only thing and that's it. It starts with this one thing and then he takes it to somewhere else, which is more of a fast kind of pace, probably actually the fastest uh, solo so far that he's actually delivered on the album. It, it's a, a fair bit quick, obviously it's still not overly fast, but it's decently fast, um, the second part, so it's got more kind of like swords and kind of speed and, and just fun to it, while the first part was definitely that kind of dark and emotional kind of thing. Lyrically Alive is basically like being, you know, uh, wanting to um, just um, feel alive, so life kind of getting you down and uh, being miserable and everything and then struggling to kind of like feel alive like he's just like a walking zombie type of thing. I think that's kind of what the lyrics um, are about, it's just kind of people who are just kind of miserable in their life and uh, they don't actually feel alive. So the song kind of is about that. So um, yeah, again multiple layers, the song's 7 minutes 22, you got uh, some high 
um, level vocals in there. So um, you got uh, the leads, you got multiple key sounds, you got uh, kind of uh, choirs put in there. Really good solo, um, a chorus that sounds really beautiful and um, amazing. And uh, just lots of kind of like parts and things and uh, kind of uh, layers with uh, like the band. And um, a good um, prevalence on the uh, bass player as well, which is uh, good to hear because you don't get that in most uh, bands. So, again, a really good song, and again, it comes off part one, which obviously was a complete kind of tonal shift to uh, going to part two, but both of them are actually joined. Which makes it, therefore, if this is seven minutes and the other one is a minute something, you're looking at around eight minutes, maybe even close to the uh, nine minute mark. So, a really a big song with a lot of parts then because of it so really good obviously um if you really think about it um the new beginning was this obviously quite simplistic but still had moving parts and everything uh, upbeat song uh, in front of you was dark but then it would be quite heavy then go to melodic and then kind of builds with heaviness and then the live part two again kind of started kind of heavy then went to a melodic and then started building it up to the well, not heavy chorus, but kind of more of the musical, fun kind of sounding. Uh, well, not fun, just more kind of like musical and beautiful sounding chorus. So it, it does follow a sort of pattern, but I think that is uh, kind of the same with most uh, progressive bands. They kind of usually start soft and then kind of build up from there. So um, technically, you can say there's a kind of repetitiveness formula going on. So I am aware of that, but. Um, I personally don't mind, I seriously don't mind, I like it. So uh, the next song is Reflection of Mind, this is their kind of epic song because it's like 11 minutes, so let's get into it. So the way Reflection of Mind starts is actually um, got a real cool uh, sound to it. It's like one of them kind of gothic music boxes, the kind of thing that uh, you would kind of imagine that would play in a Nightwish song. It's just this uh, kind of like you know, music box that's uh, quite gothic in sound. This is that kind of chimey thing that uh, goes. Um, there's uh, strings uh, in the intro. Um, eventually, uh, the uh, kind of guitar will come in. Not really on the dirty channel. It's not exactly on the clean channel. It's kind of like in this kind of mid section. And uh, yeah, the strings are going. You got the bass. You got the kind of drums and everything. Um, I think you get a little bit of uh, the choir too. Um, it then leads into the verse. Um, the verse is uh, again just that uh, kind of um, cleanish, that uh, kind of guitar tone, just with um, the uh, kind of um, strings, so where violins kind of going, um, which is probably the keyboardist. So uh, that's the keyboardist. So there's no other kind of key sound. I don't really think there's much in the way of drums are really going. I don't really hear much uh, bass either. Uh, the voice um, is um, again very kind of airy kind of uh, kind of voice very kind of breathy um obviously it needs to start escalating because that's kind of how these kind of uh, things go so um the keys will uh, then kind of uh, become a bit more kind of prominent and the pace quickens ever so slightly and then it uh, comes uh, back down to uh, where it originally was but the singer kind of has uh, brought his voice back into uh, like the average kind of mix of where his voice kind of sits so while everything uh, comes out, uh, he kind of keeps that kind of flow going with uh, the voice. And, um, and then again, it kind of progresses from there. The band kind of come um, back and then he starts taking it a step up. Um, the chorus, the first time round, um, has a real nice uh, sound to it. It's not overly kind of like energetic at all. It's just kind of got a nice kind of flowing sound to it but um, obviously it would kind of be better if it just had a bit more of a kind of punch and energy to it seeing that so far the song has been pretty kind of like held back and a bit kind of restrained. So but going back into like the uh, second verse um, you've got um, a bit of kind of change up there uh, obviously kind of the instruments have changed down a few things and everything and then just a kind of similar progression and everything but uh, with the band kind of uh, stepping it up last time then bringing it back down again. That doesn't really happen uh, this time round. Uh, the vocalist kind of just goes up a step himself and then he kind of uh, heightens it. And then um, th there's another part um, after that which um, is uh, completely new, which um, the whole band kind of comes in and then it has this kind of flow to it um, in sound. And then the pre chorus um, just sounds really uh, nice. So there wasn't a pre chorus first time, there's a pre chorus this time. 
really nice kind of um, flow to it, um, so the vocalist will uh, say something in um, high pitch and then it will flow out and then high pitch and flow it out and everything, so it's got this real nice kind of flow and sound to it. Then it leads into the chorus and that now the chorus actually has high energy, so it's the exact same chorus but it's just a lot more energetic and um, it sounds amazing um, because of the energy and then how it actually flowed, it is now just sounding like this chorus is just an incredible sounding chorus. Um, there's a bit of vibrato on the uh, voice um, when um, he uh, says uh, mind. Uh, so uh, when he says mind, there's a bit of vibrato kind of put on his voice there. So uh, that's a kind of nice style. Um, and yeah, the problem here is uh, the chorus uh, now sounds so amazing, and then coming off of a pre-chorus, that added a very nice uh, kind of flow to it that built it into this. Um, the song now kind of trails off. So this is basically like its own kind of song, and now the second part of this uh, track goes into its own new thing, which is kind of good, but um, you now really, really like this kind of chorus, at least I do, so the fact that I have to go all the way to the end of the song to get this chorus back again is a little irritating, because um, it's such a nice sounding kind of chorus, and I loved uh, the pre-chorus that came with it. So now that the song kind of completely shifts to a new direction, and it takes until the end to get that chorus back again. It is a bit of a kind of like, I'm waiting for the chorus to come back type of um, issue, which I don't really want. But uh, that is kind of the way it goes. So personally with the second part of Reflection of Mind, um, I'm not overly into it because obviously you can distinguish um, it for the first part of the song and the second part of the song. Obviously you can kind of pick which side you prefer because it's not like one complete thing, it is like two different songs. So I kind of prefer the first part. The second part, funny enough, is actually heavier. Um, it's got a very heavy riff as it comes off of that second uh, kind of chorus. And it's just, you know, this real heavy kind of guitar riff and everything. It uh, calms down a little, but then it does kind of come back and then the vocalist comes in and um, it's just this real heavy kind of uh, verse and everything. Uh, heavy guitars, heavy kind of keys, bass, drums. And then the drum, um, the vocalist, I mean, um, has slight aggression to his voice, obviously not really that much, it's not really his thing, but it's definitely a bit more of a kind of harshness uh, kind of delivery that the uh, band's doing. Uh, it then does uh, lead back into uh, melody after this uh, kind of um, lengthy-ish kind of uh, aggressive side, and then it leads into, you know, kind of piano vocals, because it's uh, got a very creepy vibe to it, it's even more creepy than like the first part of the uh, Reflection of Mind, it's this real dark, creepy uh, kind of sound. Um, the key solo is what comes first. It's a little repetitive. There are the odd phrase which does kind of get repeated. But overall, again, it's a key solo. There is a guitar solo as well, so it's double solos. And it's not a guitar and a guitar, it's a key and a guitar. So it's like two different things. So and it is a really big song and has a lot going on so it's sort of forgivable I would like I would have liked to have seen a bit more um, like variety and imagination to it um, it is a lengthiest kind of key solo with um, like changes and kind of elements but there is not a lot of showmanship and a lot going on and again there is a few kind of uh, repeats it then goes back into like the piano uh, vocals and then it uh, leads into the guitar solo eventually. The guitar solo again actually also starts uh, following a similar pattern at certain times. And then at other times um, he is doing his uh, kind of own kind of musical thing, not really doing much. There is a section where he puts in a fair decent amount of speed actually, so th this like one little section may be the fastest now. I'm saying that with every track, but um, it it's pretty quick. And um, yeah, so not bad, but not really good. Probably the worst solo for key and solo, um, solo uh, guitar. This one, even though it is still good. Um, it then leads uh, back into that kind of like piano thing, a bit of heaviness as well. And then eventually you get um, orchestration of that pre-chorus, so you know it's coming. So you hear the orchestration all kind of side, like all the strings and stuff doing the pre-chorus and then um, it builds into the pre-chorus that then um, doesn't have that kind of um, high voice placement that then flows outwards and then high and flow it doesn't kind of have that, it's all like a persistent kind of high energy uh, version of the pre-chorus 
Then it leads into the actual chorus again, which is great to hear. It's again got some new element. I'm not exactly sure what it is, to be honest, actually. But it's um, something new. It, uh, it's not like the first. It's not exactly like the second either. It is something completely new. So, yeah, technically, I really like the song. Massive in length, 11 minutes, 32 seconds. A lot of changes, some real heavy parts. Uh, three different, well, not three different choruses, but three choruses that all sound different. And then you've got a pre-chorus, which is great. And then changes for a second time as well. It's like one song and two songs. You've got two solos, one beat key, one beat guitar. Um, good voice with uh, vibrato, um, like breathy elements. And then you've got uh, kind of high... Um, uh, vocal delivery, the uh, standard vocal delivery, then you've got um, the uh, kind of restrained high uh, soothe note that then kind of flows out into a beautiful kind of singing style. So there is still a lot on offer, so even though uh, kind of like the second part kind of loses it a bit because there's not, it's just like this consistent heaviness and then it kind of goes to a consistent kind of mellow part instead of everything kind of constantly kind of evolving and shifting. It's just like, here's a block and here's kind of a block of this, so, um, yeah, second part loses it a little, it's still good though. It's just because you can distinguish it into one and then part two, you can pick which you prefer, so it's the way it is. So, good song, so the next track is going to be Insomnia. <laughs> 